Good afternoon, and welcome to today's Ad Week webinar, where we'll be looking at how to build awareness on Pinterest with a look at how Walgreens became a holiday gifting destination. And today's webinar is being brought to you uh, in partnership with Pinterest. I'm Stuart File. Custom Publishing Director of Adweek, and I'll be your host for this uh, almost Christmas in July type of webinar. Uh, we're very excited about it all. Uh, but before we begin, let me just uh, take a moment and just go over some logistics and timing for everyone. Uh, the presentation itself today should go somewhere in the 30-minute range. Afterwards, we will have time for audience Q&A. So if you have a question uh, at any time for today's speakers, uh, just use the question tool. It should be on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, and just ask away. We're going to get to as many as we can at the end of the webinar. Uh, we are supporting social sharing on today's webinar. So if you're out there, uh, go head on over to Twitter. Give us a shout out using the hashtag Pinterest Awareness. You'll see that up there on the top right of this slide, and you'll see it on all our subsequent slides. We'll be live tweeting out some of the uh, the information, and you can certainly follow the conversation on Twitter uh, with the Twitter widget that is up there on your screen. You'll see that in the in the top tab, uh, and that'll be following that hashtag Pinterest Awareness hashtag, uh, following the hashtag uh, Pinterest Awareness. Uh, it's not too late to invite a colleague to today's webinar, uh, and we, we urge you to do so. If you have someone who you know is going to be interested in this, uh, if the email confirmation and reminder you got today, there's a bit.ly with a link over to the registration page. Share that with them. Uh, invite them to join us, and if they can't join us live, they can always catch the recording of today's webinar, uh, which will be available on demand probably about 4 o'clock this afternoon Eastern Time, about 2 hours after the end of the webinar, uh, so that they can always go and catch the recording. Uh, one more thing to point out, and that is if you want a copy of today's slide deck, uh, use the Resource tab at the top of your screen, and in there you'll find a PDF of today's slides. Um, finally, I just want to remind everyone, uh, if you enjoy today's webinar and you want to see what else we have coming up, we have a full calendar of webinars uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, so go to the Adweek webinar calendar, www.adweek.com slash webinars, uh, or follow us on Twitter at AWWebinars. Uh, one thing I want to point out, there's actually one event that is going to be new for, for any of you who have checked this out, and this is going to be our premier Adweek live cast. Uh, and what's the difference between a live cast and a webinar? A uh, live cast is actually being programmed by the Adweek editorial staff. And our first one is going to feature uh, Bob Lord, who's the Chief Digital Officer of IBM. He's going to be looking at how to future-proof your marketing career uh, with a look at the power and prospects of artificial intelligence. Uh, and that should be a really compelling session, so uh, check that one out. You'll see a lot of things coming up on that. Uh, so let me head on over and introduce today's speakers. We are very, very happy uh, to be joined again by Amy Venner of the Retail Strategy Lead at Pinterest. Uh, this is the third in a series of webinars we've done related to Pinterest and retail. The first two looked at uh, acquisition uh, as, uh, as well as retention, uh, and this last one is looking at awareness. Uh, and it is our featured speakers on awareness, uh, and where you'll get some great case study information are, are two people from Walgreens, uh, Andrea uh, uh, Kaduck, uh, and Andrea is Director of Performance Media at Walgreens, and Robin Fallon, who's, man who's Manager of Performance Media, also at Walgreens. So let me pass this on over to Amy for today's presentation. Thanks, Stuart. I uh, appreciate you introducing us, and I really want to thank Andrea and Robin. Um, I personally enjoyed being able to work with you two on the webinar. So um, as Stuart shared, today we're talking about best practices for retailers looking to drive awareness on Pinterest. Um, when we think about sort of the fact that we're in July right now, or the tail end of July, it's all about, as retailers, starting to prepare for this holiday. Um, we're excited that the Walgreens team has decided to share their experience on Pinterest 
from last holiday because I think a lot of the learnings that they had over the process as well as the um, just the way that they approached their campaign on awareness and using video is very timely for all of us this year. So excited to have that a component of, um, of what we're going to talk about. But before we get into that, I just wanted to set the stage for everyone around why initial consideration would matters to our retail businesses, especially during the holidays. And Pinterest um, plays a unique role in the consumer journey and therefore for your business. So I want to start out by acknowledging something that's pretty obvious to us as consumers, but how easy is it and how common is it for all of us to turn to our phones whenever we have some urge to learn more about anything. Even my six-year-old son, who's figured this out, has challenged me a number of times about anything he doubts regarding an answer I give him. He's always saying to me, Mom, I know, there, I know you just need to go look at your phone. Just look at your phone and see if that's accurate. And he's been in summer camp, so this last week he said, Mom, I know there's a rubber chicken that you can, you can find. My camp said they bought Cheeto at the store. Just go on your phone and find out. And I was like, what? How? You're six years old. But he knows that the phone is a resource, resource to turn to. And it's not just to buy things, but it's to shop around and learn what's out there. Now, that's kind of a very unique, weird story about Cheeto that I'll save for another time. But I wanted to say, um, you know, in terms of consumers, we do a lot of this shopping, and we, we know that we do it before we decide even what we're going to buy. But as marketers, we rarely give proper credit to those initial touch points that influence us prior to making the decision to buy that thing. And I want to educate the industry on the importance of awareness and the strong correlation between initial consideration and growth. And I think as an industry, we've all put more than enough emphasis on the last mile, that click before the purchase, and all of our attribution systems have traditionally been set up to capture that. And what I'm going to do here is share some information that brings to light the importance earlier up in the process. Um, one of the ways I wanted to bring this to life is through some research that McKinsey released earlier this year. And it connects the dots between brands that were present at the beginning stages of the consumer's consideration process and how likely consumers were to actually buy those first things that were from those brands when they first started researching. And there is a strong correlation. Um, this chart is showing some of the math that they had done in terms of initial consideration set divided by market share ratio and able to correlate an index to say that there is a correlation, a strong connection between being there early as a brand and getting the actual sale when the consumer goes to pull the trigger. What I'd like to do is just kind of dig into this a little bit more. Um, McKinsey covers more than 125,000 consumers shopping more than 350 brands. And of the 30 categories that they researched, only three of the 30 were purchased as a loyalty-driven purchase, where consumers made the decision to buy from that brand without shopping around. But the other 27 categories, consumers exhibited strong shopping tendencies. They shopped more than they were loyal. And so this next slide breaks out a little bit more on the findings. So as we dug into it, um, we were able to, well, McKinsey was able to understand the extent to which shopping led to either a repurchase or alternatively a switch to another brand. So within those 27 categories where shopping was, a, was more dominant than loyalty, McKinsey divided consumers into three groups based on the data, um, what the data said about their buying behavior. So loyalists, that 13%, those were the group that remained faithful to the last brand that they purchased without considering other choices. Vulnerable repurchasers gave in to the urge to shop around and considered other brands, even if it was brief, before returning to the fold. 
And then that last group, Switchers, Switchers took the next step and actually purchased another brand. What surprised us was, was, was not only how ephemeral loyalty is, but also how often consumers actually switch brands once they decided to shop. In the categories where McKinsey examined uh, purchase behavior, only 13% of consumers were loyalists, and a full 87% were shopping around. A portion of this group, those vulnerable repurchasers, they represented 29% of all consumers that were in the study. They ultimately didn't change brands, but the remainder, that 58%, the biggest sample, became switchers. And incumbent brands held their own just 42% of the time. And I think what this is kind of demonstrating is that investing too much of your dollars in loyalty can be risky for today's consumer who knows how easy it is to actually shop around. Instead, we've seen that um, this move in terms of growth and wanting to focus on innovative programs for that 87% of consumers who are likely to look beyond that current brand. So digging deeper, McKinsey discovered that the brands who are first to the consumer's mind when they when, when, they dis when they triggered to make a purchase decision, those brands in that initial consideration set were more than two times as likely to be purchased as brands considered only later in the decision journey. So overall, the stat, if you remember nothing else about this, is that 69% of the brands purchased by consumers who switched brands, the switchers, 69% of the brands that were purchased by the, that group were part of the initial consideration set when they first started shopping. And I think this just, you know, as we think about holiday, the importance of being out there early and then forming that relationship with the consumer along the way as they go through consideration, evaluation, and get closer to that purchase, it's not about being there after the demand's already been generated just to capture it. It's about being part of actually generating the demand. And there's a real need for retailers to think about this um, for their brands and get in, getting in on the early stages of the shopper's journey. And this is what makes Pinterest unique. Consumers' attention on Pinterest and what their mindset is is a lot different than where they're at when they're ready to make an actual product search on a brand that they know they want to buy from or when they're in a social environment, a traditional social environment, and they want to post whatever it is that they had bought um, or the person wearing the thing they had bought for someone. Um, the reality is you want to be there as marketers earlier on so that you get the opportunity to influence what it is at the early stages. On Pinterest, consumers are moving from this awareness, this inspiration and discovery into more of an active shopping mode and into evaluation and ultimately into action. But this behavior is all fueled by inspiration. And a lot of that inspiration comes in different forms of content. And I think the, the thing that I want to demonstrate is how people, what we found out, and this is another piece of research that I want to reference, and this is one that we had done in partnership with Deep Focus called Path to Purchase, where the result was that we learned people need really a mix of inspiration and information in order to make decisions about the purchase. You can see in the red, the red dot, um, that, that represents consumers who over-index for inspirational attributes. So things like um, they wanted to complete a look or visual content that contributed to what they were, they were going through this process for. Um, discovering these new things or personalize, personalizing what it is, matching it to taste that they know that they've exhibited. I think you know, the other piece here for the informational purchase decision process, the darker gray is for more rational attributes. So things like convenience, confidence that it's going to actually get there on time for the purchase um, and when you need that, that, that product in, at your house. Um, information, you know, getting information against reviews, getting information against um, my options on returns, all those things um, are very important and they're very informative, they're very rational, and we've got players out there that do that really well. 
Um, but what we've learned about the path to purchase and the way consumers make decisions is that in, inspiration plays a bigger role in these purchases. And here you see um, some stats on pinners versus non-pinners. Pinners are in the red, and it says, what influences purchase decisions? Inspiration, pinners over-indexed, and information still being important, but were less important to the decision-making process for pinners, and even less for non-pinners. And this slide, I wanted to just kind of visually show that when you have a higher level of interest that is driven by inspiration, that is an elevated state that gets you more committed to action. And we've seen that because the results from a sort of more of a financial perspective is that when pinners spend more time and explore new ideas and essentially endorse your brand, the, the outcome is they're more likely to spend more than they originally planned than non than non pinners. And so this graph is this chart is showing you um, the index of pinners compared to non pinners. Pinners over index on likelihood to buy more products than they had originally intended. Perhaps it's because there's a theme and the gift that they want to get not only is this piece, but they want to complement it with part of the idea to complete this theme. So they're buying two or three things instead of the one gift that they had initially thought they might buy. Or they're shopping new categories, or they're recommending purchases, um, uh, purchases that, were they, that they made to friends, so this affinity. These are real things that pinners um, are more that over-index than non-pinners. And we believe that the mindset of the pinner is a big contributor to this. They're not on Pinterest because they're looking to share sort of user-generated content. They're on Pinterest because they're looking to find things to, to buy, to shop, to be inspired by. Um, so this graph just shows from Mary Meeker the percent of consumers who use each platform to find or shop for products. And that's the mindset of someone on Pinterest. Over half of them are there for that reason. And the behavior as a result is different because people use it to plan, planning things for the holiday party coming up, planning things for the work party, planning things for what they're going to do on Christmas morning, what they're going to make, what they want to wear. And what that ends up doing is it helps people design their lives. It shows them the possibilities, not just doing what they've done every single time before or what everyone else does, but it actually gives them the opportunity to be themselves and to have this come out in the form of what they do and what they buy and how they live. And we think that's a pretty powerful position to be in. So um, before I hand it over to Andrea and Robin, I wanted to just hit a couple stats for those that aren't as familiar with Pinterest. First of all, um, there's two surface areas primarily on Pinterest. One is the home feed. Think about that as a little bit of a lean back experience where you're discovering things. No two home feeds are the same, by the way. Um, what's in your home feed is based on the information that you've given to Pinterest through the form of impressions, clicks, um, saves. So your custom home feed is giving you a little bit of a sort of lean back experience, and then when you're ready to be more active, like you want to start looking for some linen curtains or you have an idea in your head but you don't know how to name it, you go to search and you can visually search through things and better understand what your options are as you start broad before you start narrowing in and making decisions. And 75% of the content that people are consuming is from businesses. So this is not a user-generated content platform. This is a platform where people go to make decisions, and to engage with content from businesses. I want to highlight that one of the areas from a, an awareness perspective that are, um, that's a new tool in the toolkit, we've had video, we've had promoted video, but we're releasing some new features that are exciting. We have autoplay in feed, which is essentially giving consumers the opportunity to experience your brand and your product um, and do that in the feed and then allow them to click into it so they can experience the full sound and um, visuals of that video. I'm going to play an example of this real quick. Um, but before I do, I just want to hit that a couple of the other new things is the ability to target in new and interesting ways. We've got search targeting, and we've got the ability to do very um, focused audience targeting. 
Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually target, and video is now a part of that. And so is placements, where you want to be in the actual um, Pinterest experience. And measurement partners, we've released a lot of new information on the measurement partners we have relationships with. And so you know, depending on your goal, you have a lot to, to dig into. And we're going to have um, Andrea share some of the ways that they've measured things for their campaign for holiday last year. And then in terms of ways of buying, it's not just reservation. It's also going to be now available in, in the auction. So let me go over here. And I'm going to not talk for a minute while I play So that's a sneak peek of, of one of the ways that video has, um, is going to be working here on Pinterest, um, which I think is very exciting and it opens up a lot of new opportunities. Um, I'm going to skip this for the sake of time, but there is a great opportunity to not only be open to brands, um, consumers, uh, the way that they actually um, act on Pinterest makes them more open, but they also take action. Um, some of the research we saw on Pinterest video viewing versus other platform video viewing. And we at Pinterest have many different formats and many different targeting opportunities to reach consumers across that journey. And they all can be packaged together so that you as a retailer can hit against awareness, acquisition, or retention. Today, again, we're talking about awareness, which is a combination of unique targeting bid types, formats, and measurement. So. Um, I, at this point, want to hand it over to Robin to talk a little bit about the Walgreens campaign and what you guys did last year for holiday. Perfect. Thanks, Amy, and hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. So for holiday 2016, Walgreens wanted to increase awareness of our holiday gifting assortment with a main focus on primary gifts for secondary people. People tend to come to Walgreens for the convenience of last-minute gifts, and we wanted to inspire our consumer by providing her ideas to create a meaningful holiday for that recipient. Typically, our holiday campaigns are reserved just for the month of December, but after working with Pinterest to understand the consumer journey, we decided, decided to start our Pinterest campaign in early November to be present while she was starting her holiday planning. Our main goal was to drive awareness of Walgreens as a holiday gifting destination and focused on KPIs such as brand lift, video views, and return on ad spend. Like I mentioned, Walgreens' main focus was to target the secondary people in our lives, such as a coworker, a hostess for a holiday party, or even a secret Santa gift. In order to do this, we had to get really granular within our targeting to make sure we were hitting the right person with the pin that spoke to them. We took advantage of Pinterest targeting opportunities like personas and keywords, while layering in our balance reward data to hit an array of audience segments. Walgreens tested both CPM and CPC buying models for the right recipe for success. CPM, which was used for promoted video with a pin carousel, allowed us to reach a mass audience with guaranteed impressions while driving more awareness amongst those audiences. CPC allowed us to be as efficient as possible while allowing for flexibility within that auction buying space. Now that we had our targeting and buying models determined, we really needed to make sure our content spoke to the different personas that we were wanting to hit. Before our photo shoot, we had the Pinterest creative team meet with our cross-functional team to do a brainstorming session specific to the creative development. During this session, we whiteboarded out what a consumer journey might look like for our Walgreens holiday campaign and came to a collective agreement on what types of ad products we should be utilizing. We then took these whiteboard ideas to the photo shoot to make sure we were capturing the right images to inspire her during her holiday planning. With the main goal of brand awareness, we had to keep a few things in mind when creating the assets for our Pinterest campaign. Since most of Pinterest consumption happens on a mobile device, it's important to make sure your images are mobile friendly and easily understood when viewed in a vertical screen. Detailed descriptions are also very important in order to enhance the story the image of the pin is trying to tell. When thinking about brand awareness, uh, brand awareness on Pinterest, it's important to take advantage of the visual aspect of the platform by showing what you mean versus relying on the audio, especially when thinking about promoted video. 
It's also important to use compelling images like lifestyle shots and include your logo so the brand is easily recognized within the pin. One of the exciting pieces of content that we developed by taking our whiteboard ideas and applying these best practices was our promoted video. So I will play that now for everyone to see. Okay, so as you can see, we really honed in on those different personas within that video, but also utilized those carousel and those six pins at the bottom to really drive home what our main message was with, um, with that video ad unit. After the campaign was finalized and we were looking through our metrics, it was really interesting to see where a consumer was saving our content. As expected, many of the boards were gifting related, but some of the labeling of those boards provided insight in how people might be searching for holiday gifts, which is something Walgreens will definitely be keeping in mind when planning our 2017 holiday campaign. I will now pass it off to Andrea, who will speak to our Miller Brown brand list study for our holiday campaign. Great. Thank you, Robin. Um, absolutely. So, to aid in our understanding of how our Pinterest holiday media really resonated with our customers, we partnered with Millard Brown Digital to gauge our brand lift by format, creative, and frequency. So measurement studies like this we've done in the past, and they're really invaluable for us to understand best practices as it relates to our brand and to also inform you know, future campaign strategies of how we can connect with our audience. So the study was done using a five-question survey given to a pre-selected control and exposed group among the audiences that we were targeting for this campaign. So this was done across both our formats that we were running, both the video and the static pins. Um, both audience groups were given the same survey so that we could then understand lifts from those people that were actually exposed to our holiday ads. From the study, we came away with four key learnings. One, video ads aided in brand association around small gifting, with Walgreens being a place that helps find gifts for all while saving time. Video really was able to bring to life our key brand messaging and gave us a memorable format to showcase a variety of small gifts in action, as you saw in the video. Um, two, our static ads, or the promoted pins, uh, drove aided awareness of our product selection and were more useful from an educational standpoint on product offerings related to different gifting personas. Um, this was expected as the pins were very product oriented and were used a in a way to prompt purchase. Um, three, as with any Pinterest campaign, the earned metrics are really invaluable and extended our exposure well beyond the media dollars that we put behind the ad placements. So this is a key differentiator of Pinterest versus other platforms, and earned media definitely is something that we factor into our, our campaign wrap-up reports. Uh, four, four-plus frequency of pin exposures was the sweet spot for us, as the overall opinion of Walgreens increased after four exposures. Um, so from these results, we plan to continue to use multiple media formats um, as they were able to impact different campaign objectives. And we're going to aim for a 4x frequency, which boosted our brand favorability. Um, we are happy to find that the efforts in both the static and the video formats 
were successful, but in different ways for the campaign objectives. Um, so overall, if, you know, video key to brand awareness and then filtering right into the static pins to help drive in-store action. Um, so Stuart, I'm going to hand it over to you now for Q&A. Great. Well, thank you, Andrea and Robin. Uh, a lot of great, great case study here on, on what Walgreens did. And Amy, of course, thanks for the great insights on Pinterest. There is probably so much that people don't really know about the platform or, or have their preconceptions. So it's always great to get that information. Uh, before we get into the Q&A, I just want to remind the audience, uh, if you have a question for the speakers today, uh, just use the Q&A tool there on the left side of your screen. We've got a number of questions already queued up. Uh, but we will get to as many as we can over the next 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and if we don't get to your question, I will make sure that it gets forwarded over to today's speakers so that they will have the opportunity to reply to you offline. Uh, I also want to remind everyone, uh, if you want a copy of today's slide deck, and there's certainly a lot of information in there uh, that some, some of the best practices, uh, just uh, on the top of your screen you'll see the resource tab. Uh, and in there you can download a PDF of today's slides. Uh, also, if you want to go back and listen to this again or you want to share it with a colleague, today's webinar has been recorded or is being recorded. Uh, so you can check out the on-demand version of it. Uh, you'll get a notice in your email in about two hours with a link over to the on-demand version. So uh, come on back, listen again, share it with your colleagues, let them uh, pick up on some of this great knowledge that's getting shared. So um, let me head on over to the Q&A. Uh, so Robin, let's, uh, let, let's just start off with a question over to you that came in. And, and this is um, you know, asking sort of how do you think about the, you know, the asset creation for Pinterest uh, as opposed to some of the other digital platforms that Walgreens is using these days? Uh, do you have a different approach? Uh, and, and what are some of those differences? Yeah, so um, thanks, Stuart. So, like I mentioned earlier, Pinterest is definitely a very visual platform. So it's all about what the user sees versus what they're reading. And so it's really important to get our message across in that, in that pin or that um, promoted video that we're shooting. So um, we do take a different approach when developing assets for um, Pinterest. And we really build off of our Pinterest assets to um, develop assets for the rest of our social platforms. Um, because we're able to break down um, the different long-form tutorials or the how-tos into smaller segments that may be um, ideal for other social platforms. But really, when we're thinking about any campaign on Pinterest, we do leverage our insights from our team on what the consumer journey is. So um, when does she start planning? What is she talking about? How is she searching? How is she saving? And really taking those learnings and applying those to it. So if she's pinning a holiday pin um, to a Valentine's Day gift board, maybe we need to reconsider how we're um, doing that and not really reserve that pin for holiday, but start leveraging that for other, cam or other uh, campaigns as well. So really just taking in those insights and applying them and making sure that it's a very visual asset that we're putting out on the platform. Great. Uh, Amy, let's, uh, let's toss one your way here. I mean, I, I know Walgreens was talking about Millward Brown, and uh, Andrea went through a lot of that, that information. Uh, but in terms of measuring campaign effectiveness, I mean, Millward Brown is certainly one uh, potential source and certainly the retail end, but are there other platform metrics that you might recommend that, uh, that retailers or, or others using uh, Pinterest might, might use to sort of judge a campaign? Yes, and um, I, I first want to just say that it's funny how quickly we as marketers kind of realize we have a goal, but then when we go to measure, we may not always be looking at the KPIs that align to the goal. So I would say, you know, what, what um, Andrea had shared about Millard Brown, like that is like the top, if your goal is awareness, that's the way to measure that, um, but additionally for video, we recommend also, and I think they talked about this as well, you know, cost per view, cost per completed view. Um, these metrics uh, give you a measure of how efficient your campaign was in real time. Um, in our alpha, we found that both metrics were highly competitive with other feed-based platforms like Facebook or Snapchat. Um, you can also look at average time spent watching the video. Um, the media 
efficiency paired with the high level of intent of our audience, so like time spent watching, it just leads to this a stronger story around returns even if your primary objective is awareness. I hope that helps. Uh, I, I, I think it does. Uh, and Amy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with you here, and let me just uh, fi find this question that came in. And, and, I, and I think that this is uh, um, probably one that you, you get, um, get frequently here. Uh, you know, we, we looked at this as, uh, as, as a large brand here in, in retail. Uh, certainly can't get much bigger than Walgreens. And certainly the other two uh, webinars we, we've done, again, are these sort of larger brands. Uh, when we did one with Target and we did one uh, with, with Wayfair. Uh, but there are certainly a number of smaller retailers, uh, one, one store or, uh, or you know, uh, maybe not the, certainly the traffic level. Are, are a lot of these learnings easily applicable to smaller brands as well? Uh, and is there any recommendation that you might have along that line? So definitely the answer is yes. We've got a lot of small brands and big brands on the platform. I think the, the, the great thing about Pinterest is that people are there to learn about new brands, new products. Um, a stat we have from one of our own internal pieces of research, actually this one was with Millard Brown, 72% of consumers identified new brands as a result of Pinterest. Um, and so I think there's this strong correlation for small brands and large brands to get in front of consumers and make uh, an impression and it influence them at their early stage so that then you're part of that, that um, set of considerations when it comes to the purchase um, where you wouldn't have been otherwise. So yeah, I think it definitely applies to all brands. Um, and I think the smaller brands have the opportunity to get in front of consumers who are really interested um, in a topic that you have a product for. Okay. I uh, just want to remind our audience, we've got a lot of questions that have come in, uh, so we're going to get to what we can here. Uh, and again, please feel free to ask a question if you, uh, to, if you have something that you want to hear from uh, Amy, Andrea, and Robin. Uh, but if we don't get to your question, I will forward them on over to Pinterest so that there's a chance for them to reach out to you offline. Amy, one more for you here. Uh, and this is you know, people looking at the video ads. And again, uh, I think you know if, if Andrea and Robin want to uh, add, add their two cents on this as well. But a lot of questions coming about the video ads and also about targeting. Uh, and so one of the questions here was, you know, how targeted can you get the video ads? Right? Can you uh, zero them in on a, on a particular product interest? Uh, you know, how how do you make sure that people are seeing that uh, when they're coming in, either you know within their feed or within search? Yeah, so I can start, and then I would love to have um, maybe, you know, Robin, you can highlight a couple of the, the things from your perspective, but um, you can get very targeted. You can do it at a number of different levels. Um, if you're interested in more of a hitting your current customer base with a message about a new product that you could, you know, cross-sell them um, on, you know they're interested or that they have made a purchase in something, you can use your customer, uh, your CRM file, and you can actually target the video to them specifically. Um, you could get very, very detailed in, in what you want to say and who you want to say it to. Uh, you could go broader as, as far as like our interests. We have many, many interests that allow a marketer to say anyone who has expressed interest in one of these, um, one of these types of interests, um, then I want my video to get in front of them. Or uh, keyword, if there's an opportunity for you to hone in on one particular type of um, like a category or a broad term that you want anyone who's doing that, searching for that, you can target against, um, a, against consumers who make those um, searches on Pinterest. So there, it's pretty open. I don't know, Robin, if you would have anything else you'd like to add to that? No, I think you covered a lot of it. I think that when there's a lot of targeting opportunities on the table, the best thing to do is test, and that's how Walgreens has really found success um, in, in, you know, in our different channels and our different campaigns on Pinterest is just by testing and really breaking out the performance by the targeting that we choose to do. Okay. Um, Andrea, I don't want, to, don't want to leave you uh, hanging over there. Um, question, let me direct this one your way. Um, some people are, you know, looking at this, and certainly, you know, we're in July, which is uh, 
which is, of course, the, the holiday season for, for those in retail or the holiday planning season. So, um, you know, know, knowing what you know now, um, what might you do to sort of uh, approach the holiday season uh, or, or change in some of your approach? Uh, are there any sort of, you know, key learnings that, that you might apply to this uh, from this campaign? Uh, and how might you go in that? Yeah, great question. Um, I feel like the measurement study really gave us some nice learnings going into this year, uh, particularly knowing that video moved the needle the most and aided awareness. Um, we really over-indexed uh, on the video format in that regard. Seeing all the research that Amy presented showing getting out there early um, to you know, change people's perceptions and to build that awareness um, just layers nicely into that video performance. So we are going to prioritize our video um, and you know, definitely run video again this year since it did so well and try to start it as early as possible to really grab that awareness and, and get people to consider Walgreens. Um, Great to see that our static pins also did well in terms of uh, driving consideration of our products. Um, knowing that, you know, we'll prioritize in terms of media dollars and weight. Um, you know, putting those a little bit heavier towards the end, uh, mid to end December. Um, really trying to increase our visit intent. Um, there is opportunity for us to improve our visit intent metrics coming out of the study. That's an area where we had hoped to rank a little bit higher but didn't. Uh, but that's okay because we can adjust this year. And um, in order to do that, we'll try to be more explicit in our, in our pins of how Walgreens is a convenience destination um, instead of you know, showcasing perhaps a DIY or tutorial that doesn't really prompt an in-store action. Um, so just you know, really highlighting the role that Walgreens can bring um, for convenience and getting people in store. Um, so I, I think those, um, oh, additionally, the 4, 4x frequency goal. Um, we, you know, as I said before, we're operating off of benchmarks. Now we know um, through the study that 4x is really the point at which our brand perceptions, brand perceptions were changed. Um, so we'll incorporate all of those learnings into the campaign this year. And actually, um, Andrea, one additional thing that I should have mentioned during the targeting question, but I was thinking is a good tr tactic for folks this holiday because of our new targeting capabilities with video, when, fo when, when consumers view the video, um, whether that's viewing it partially or fully, um, brands, retailers specifically, have the opportunity to retarget those consumers. So it can be a sort of relationship you establish early with folks through video, and then you retarget them with static pins throughout the camp, throughout the holiday season to keep your relationship going and keep yourself um, in consideration in an evaluation phase and more likely to be part of the, the purchase. Uh, that, that's great. I mean, it's, it's interesting to, again, hear how the, uh, how the two, how, how video and static really work hand in hand uh, and, and what some brands uh, can do to sort of reach out in that area. Um, Andrea, you, you, you may have referenced this, and uh, if, if you were Robin and, and Amy, if you want to you know, come in as well. Um, a lot of the, the people are asking us. Certainly, we, we think of Walgreens as, uh, as as being, you know, certainly a high brick and mortar uh, uh, presence. Uh, and, and I guess the questions what people are asking is, is, you know, is a campaign like this being used to drive uh, in-store traffic, and is, is it being used to drive online traffic, or are you really sort of looking at a combination of the two? And and whether there you sort of have any different strategies depending on on what you ultimately want to accomplish in that area. So Andrea, let me let me toss that one. Maybe you know if you have a, had a sense of that, or, or Robin, if you had a sense of that first. Absolutely, um, a campaign of this nature, the intent of it is really to drive the in-store traffic. Uh, majority of our sales happen in store. Uh, we definitely don't want to exclude anybody that is looking for something online or can easily use our website to do research, but. At the end of the day, we want them to get into the store, and we want to be convenient. We want to be there for them when others aren't. Um, we, we, you know, we're open. Um, and some stores are open on Christmas Day, um, and we we want to, um, you know, showcase that we are right around the corner and available. Um, you know, 
whenever somebody needs, you know, a last minute gift, a small gift, that we, we have that selection and, and are there. So this campaign is really around getting people to the stores. Got it. Uh, Amy, uh, I'm looking at the clock here. Maybe we've got time for one more. So let me let me toss this one your way, uh, and it, it's maybe a little Pinterest specific. Uh, but someone here was, you know, asking about gift guide pins that show numerous products, uh, and and the question here was, you know, how do you sort of recommend using those, and um, you know, and and ultimately ensure that sort of the mega description displays are are coming in properly. So in other words, if you've got uh, a gift guide and it's covering things really ac across categories, is there a good way to sort of deliver that? Uh, and this is, I guess, someone looking at a at more of a holiday strategy here. Yeah, I think that it goes back to some of the things that um, Robin was saying around just testing and seeing what works. I would. Um, I would say some best practices are that if you're able to, when you're targeting um, something that's a little broader, it's nice to be able to give the consumer the opportunity to react to more than just one product. So in the creative of your pin, showing multiple products um, can be a real effective way at um, creating inspiration and giving someone a little more to go off of um, based on how you're targeting. So again, if you can go broad and, and be a little more um, purposeful in the types of products that you're putting in front of consumers and then continue a relationship with those that acted by re-engaging them. Um, I do think you have to be careful because the landing page becomes important. If you're going to be broad, you've got to have a landing page that's broad as well. But um, it's really just mirroring that consumer and where they are. If you can start courting them early on, you can kind of think about where they're at. And if they're in more of a early on phase, starting broad and inspirational is the best practice, and then continuing your relationship through more specific um, creative and more specific landing page at a point in time when they're getting closer to purchase. Um, there's a lot of fun ways to test how your gift guide can resonate and get out there for people at various stages. So, um, yeah, definitely a fun thing to, to start playing with early on so you get some learnings under your belt before the big ramp up. Great. Well, nothing I like more than talking about the holidays on a on a hot and humid day here in New York. Um, listen, Amy, I want to I want to thank you for uh, uh, for your time and and you know everything you've brought to these and and Andrea and Robin. Uh, again, a lot of great information and a lot of really great insights and learnings that people can apply from what uh, Walgreens has done. Um, one, just a few reminders to our audience again, uh, the slides in that resource tab, so go ahead over there, download a PDF. Um, the webinar was recorded, so you can catch the on-demand version. Check your email. We'll be notifying you as soon as that's live. Uh, and again, if you enjoyed today's Adweek webinar, we, we urge you to check out the Adweek webinar calendar, www.adweek.com slash webinars, and sign up for some we've got coming in the next weeks. Uh, if it's a little slow in your office during the summer, take an hour, enjoy a webinar, learn something, and start applying it as, uh, as things really kick into action uh, in the fall. And again, uh, I want to again remind everyone about this upcoming Ad Week live cast that, uh, that is being uh, put together by our editorial team and is going to uh, feature uh, the Chief Digital Officer of IBM, Bob Lord, talking about some of the prospects uh, for artificial intelligence, just uh, how it's really changing marketing and, and what you as a marketer can do to incorporate that uh, and look at where your career path and how that's going to be impacted by, by AI. So please check that one out and uh, and join us for that. Uh, so one last time, thanks to our speakers today, thanks to our audience, and we look forward to seeing everyone at an upcoming Ad Week webinar. <laughs>